Well, quite a few areas saw rainfall that was pretty heavy over the weekend and the outlook for this week ahead might see some more rain in some spots, but might open up some planting windows here as we get into the back half of May. Joining us now as we take a look at this week's weather, Eric Snodgrass of Nutrient. Eric, great to catch up with you again this week, my friend. And looking at that uh, weather map last week over the weekend here into this week, Plenty of rainfall for some folks. Some areas got some pretty heavy totals, it sounded like. Yeah, and it all kind of really came to a head on Friday and Saturday this past weekend where this deep low came out to parts of Nebraska, then hit Iowa. And there was uh, a lot of video of guys out storm chasing some of these storms. In fact, there was uh, kind of a famous meteorologist named uh, Reed Timmer who let his truck just get hit by a tornado and recorded the whole thing. That was in parts of Nebraska, Spalding, Nebraska. But the idea here is that when you look at a map that shows you precip over the weekend, you, you, you see more of the places that got the rain than, than the holes. But we got to see where those holes are. Still parts of Kansas and Oklahoma, still parts of Missouri. There are pockets in Illinois. In fact, there are pockets in the I states that, uh, you know, woke up after a week of everybody else getting rain today. They still kind of sit in this dry in these drier spots. And so while overall we shrunk the area that was seeing pretty sizable soil moisture deficits that kind of came down when you compare it to the first of the month, we still need to see uh, more precip getting into the central United States and then parts of the Eastern Corn Belt to kind of make up for this. You know, uh, so overall we would look at last week as one of those really key weeks going into a growing season because uh, there was a lot of people that did get moisture, but there were places that were missed and that's going to be top of mind going forward. And some of those key areas that you highlighted, too, I see parts of southwestern Iowa just looking at, you know, kind of little holes and then looking at the soil moisture percentile maps that you had in your Monday morning update. And, and so to your point, got some of those areas that need to catch up on some of that moisture. But as we turn our attention to this week ahead, some of those areas that either lacking in moisture or some of the areas that got plenty of moisture sounds like might have some planting windows open up in various areas here this week, Eric. Yeah, and it's all complements of a pretty massive ridge sitting over Western Canada. We had a lot of wildfires in Canada for the last two weeks now. Most of it's been in the forested areas, but still it just shows you how dry things are there. Well, a massive ridge is sitting over the west, which means the flow for us is now coming out of the northwest rather than the southwest. We just tend to be drier in that setup. So we're going to start to push more of the the wetter weather farther to the south, and we're going to see more planting windows open up in the Midwest just to finish up what's left to be done. Uh, but unfortunately, when you bring in some of that drier air from Canada, we also bring in maybe late this week a chance to get those lows back in the 30s. Um, I did see in some of the forecast models just tiny little areas of frost in parts of North Dakota. It may not happen. We may not, may not be able to get the temperatures down that cold. But there's still some bare soil, and that's one of the things that can help lead to that. So you clear out the skies, calm the winds down, bring in the high pressure. Bare soil radiates energy away very quickly. You could get a patchy frost in places. I'm not seeing this. This is not a high-impact frost event, not, not even close. There's no indications of that right now. But uh, it's just that time of year. North Dakota, we're, we still have normally half of the historical frost events happen after today. So there's pockets in North Dakota we got to think about. Uh, but uh, yeah, overall, I think a lot of folks are going to be happy with maybe a little bit of a drier week just to get what's left done. But we got to bring the moisture back as we get into June. Well, let's think about moving ahead to the week after this one into June, et cetera, getting into summer. What's kind of what are things looking like here as we look three, four weeks out and beyond, Eric? You know, right now, if we use the guidance uh, given to us by our best models, we use what's got what we have from the CPC it would appear that we're on this kind of week on week off pattern. So what I mean by that is the very end of May could go right back over to an active, you know, jet stream pattern that fuels up the, the central plains and that'll eventually move into the Midwest and move over the Great Lakes. Uh, overall, I think we're going to keep our warmer bias around for the most part. And what I'll be watching most carefully is if we get the jet stream to split across the West. That's why you see cooler conditions in the Southwest, but warmer in the Northwest. Now, remember, to be cooler than normal in Arizona in late May means you still have high temperatures approaching 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just not 105. So we just have to take this all with a grain of salt here and understand that the differences are with respect to normal. But yeah, I think we're I think right now the atmosphere is advertising this hype. Week on, week off, week on, week off. And to be honest, if it does that all the way to September, most of us will be really, really happy with the results of that. So we'll keep an eye on this as it presses forward.
Yeah, and all this kind of tied to that talk of the shift to this El Nino weather pattern and, and how that's all setting up. And I know, of course, we've been talking about that. You've been following that. Just could be a matter to see how this all sets up here over the next couple of months, Eric. Yeah, and CPC released uh, midweek last week that their newest outlook for the remainder of the year is over 90% chance of having El Nino. That I'm talking all the way back to like December, January, February of this winter. Uh, and we've already seen the changes in the ocean temperature. The other main part of this is that we've watched the cold water that's sitting on the West Coast. We've started to see that warm up. And that's that negative PDO signal that if you keep the cold water on the West Coast, then we have increased risk of hot, dry spells in the Corn Belt. But if it keeps fading, it just lowers that risk, which is what I think we're going to continue to see. So if, this big if, if El Nino dominates, hot, stormy summer is what's on tap. And most of the time our crop tends to do quite well in that. Where we get a little stress is with two warm overnight lows, but that's all yet to happen. So right now we're just being speculative about it. But we have to make the argument that getting rid of La Nina was key, and that's certainly what's going on right now. Eric, any other thoughts for this week? Uh, any weather in South America? Are we going to get some rain in some spots possibly? What are you watching elsewhere? Yeah, the monsoon in Brazil has shut down. That's normal for May, especially mid-May. So there's like a hole right in the middle where you don't get anything. But around its periphery, it can still rain. And we are seeing storms late this week coming through Argentina, southern Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay. Most of those areas need that, uh, especially the late planted safrina crop in southern Brazil. This could be huge for those folks because they were very worried and I was worried that they were going to stay drier. Also around the world, the Australians are cold in their fall uh, and uh, they're worried about drought with El Nino building over the next not just six months, but 18 months. And then if we look across Europe, finally a break away from the heat that was in the Iberian Peninsula. They're warming back up in Ukraine and the Russian wheat belt after a colder spring. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening across the planet now with one season transitioning away toward winter and us going toward our summer time period here in the Northern Hemisphere. So, yep, there's always going to be something to talk about. Well, a lot to keep an eye on. And if you want to sign up for Eric's daily weather newsletter, you can get that delivered right to your email inbox. The links are on our website, markettalkag.com. With that, Eric Stockgrass of Nutrient, always great to catch up with you, buddy. We will talk to you again soon. Yeah, sounds good. Have a good one.